Here we go. Um, so, I'm trying to remember exactly where we left off. Thank you. Um, okay, we talked about all this. We did this example. We did that example, right? Didn't we do this? Listen up. We did this one, right? Yeah. So we're ready for this one. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right. Do we need to split up the group again? Or can you guys pay attention? Do I need to split up this group? Because I, I think I haven't uh, focused on this enough here. Okay, but make sure that you're paying attention, please. Now, you guys talk. You, you do your work but you do sometimes talk as well. All right. So, um, what we need to talk about here is, is how to solve this problem. Um, we're trying to figure out pH, right? So, um, what's the formula for pH again? Yeah, it's that weird one, right? Negative log of the H plus concentration. Okay. All right. So, uh, we don't seem to have what we need here, right? Which really what we need, um, well, this isn't really asking a question, is it? <laughs> um, let's find the pH of 735 liters of a solution that contains 0.34 moles of HNO3. Okay? Yes. We are. Yep. Uh, probably Thursday of this week, I think. Is that a bad thing? Okay. All right. Well, we can talk about that later. Um, that's unusual. All right. So, um, what we need to find here is the H plus, right? In order to find the pH. Okay. So, if we need to find the H plus concentration, how might we go about doing that? Any ideas here? How do I find the concentration of something normally? Moles over liters. Good. Moles over liters. That's molarity, right? Okay. So moles over liters. So we've got we've got 0.34 moles of HNO3, and if we divide that by the liters, I think that was supposed to be uh, 735 milliliters. Why don't we change that? That's going to give us a more reasonable answer here. All right, 735. Just change this on your notes to milliliters. Okay. So if that's milliliters, we got to have moles over liters. So how would we change that to liters? It would be 0.735, right? Okay. So we take the 0.34 divided by 0.735. That should give us a concentration here. Gives us a molarity of 0.46 to the right number of sig figs, and that's HNO3, right? Okay, so now we have to talk about something that we talked about a little bit on Friday. That's the molarity of HNO3. How do we get the molarity of H plus from that number? it would actually be the same on this one, okay? And the reason why, when I put HNO3 into water, what does it immediately do? You remember? It splits apart, right? It splits apart into H plus and NO3 minus, just like with the HCl, right? Okay? So if that splits apart, so if I have 0.46 molar HNO3, then I have 0.46 molar H plus, and I also have 0.46 molar NO3 minus. Okay, it's and that's because of the number of moles that are here, right? So if I have one mole of HNO3, then I'm going to have one mole of H plus one mole of NO3 minus when they split apart because we're just counting pieces with moles. Okay, so as long as there's just one H in front of the formula, this concentration is going to be the same as the H plus concentration. Does that make sense? 
Now, if there's two H's, like H2SO4, that's going to be a little different, okay? But I'm not going to throw one of, the, one of that type of problem at you, okay? Um, so, I mean, normally, whatever you get for the concentration of the acid, that's going to be the concentration of the H plus as well, okay? So now we can plug in, figure out our pH. We just take the negative log of the 0.46 negative log of the 0.46, okay? Which, you guys remember how to punch that into your calculator? Was there anyone who wasn't able to do this on their calculator on Friday? I see a lot of people not even trying. I need to know that all of you know how to do this. Uh, Just taking take the negative log of 0.46. So on yours, I put the number. you're going to put 0.46, then you're going to hit the log button, and then you have to hit your negative button also to make that turn that number into a positive number. Equals 0.3. 0.3, is that right? Okay. Oh, okay, maybe that is right for this one. 0.46. Okay. Yeah, maybe I should have kept that at liters <laughs> now that I look at it because it would have been a lower concentration then. But that's, that's fine, okay? Um, this is going to be a pretty low pH. It's anywhere between 0 and 14 normally, right? So our pH on this one is going to be 0 0.34. Okay. What is that telling me as far as the pH? Would I want this acid on my skin? Okay, if it's the, the lower the number, the more acidic it is, all right? So this is, this is a bad one, okay? 0.46 molar nitric acid, you do not want that on your skin. That might cause a little bit of damage, all right? <clears throat> um, just to give you an idea, the nitric acid I have in the back cabinet, um, pretty sure is 14.8 molar, if I'm remembering the concentration right. Do you want that on your skin? No, not at all. That's the stuff, I don't know if you remember this, that's the stuff I poured on the copper penny and then the brown gas started to come out at the beginning of the year. That's, that's what happens when you have really concentrated nitric acid. By the way, if you put in negative log of 14.8 into your calculator, it gives you a negative pH, negative 1.2 or something like that, okay? Um, you really don't want something with a negative pH to touch your skin. Okay. So now let's talk about pOH. So see if we can figure this out, all right? I don't think this is going to be too hard for you. If pH is the negative log of the H plus concentration, then pOH might be negative log of OH minus concentration, right? Okay? Now remember, OH minus, what is that usually associated with? If I have OH, if I have something that makes OH minus in the solution, then we would call it a a base, right? Okay. So pOH, we're measuring the OH minus concentration. So that's uh, it's used to express basicity. That's one way to say it. Or alkalinity. You can also say it that way. You guys ever heard the word alkaline? Maybe. Um, yeah, like the alkaline earth metals. Okay. And the reason that we call them the alkaline metals or the alkaline earth metals is because those metals right there in the first and second columns on the periodic table combine with hydroxide to make bases, all right? So then when you put them in solution, they uh, increase the OH minus concentration, okay? Um, you might have also heard it in terms of batteries, right? You guys ever heard of alkaline or alkali batteries, okay? Um, a lot of times batteries have a, a high concentration of OH minus in them, so that's why we call them alkaline. So this is going to be very similar to the pH equation. You guys got it right. pOH is equal to the negative log of the OH minus concentration instead of H plus. Okay. Uh, it turns out if you add the pH and the pOH together, it always equals 14. Okay. So if you know one, you can figure out the other. So if I have a pH, if my solution has a pH of 7, then what's the pOH? 7, because it has to add up to 14. Okay. If it has a pH of 5, then it would have a pOH of 9. 
Okay, see how that works? It just it always adds up to 14. Okay, so here's an example. Find the pH and the pOH of a solution that has an OH minus concentration of 6.3 times 10 to the negative 11. Okay, well, what do we want to start with, pH or pOH? Probably, okay, pH. So I need to find the H plus concentration. Hmm. Yeah, it might be better to start with the pOH, right? Because we have the OH minus concentration, not the H plus concentration. It's going to be difficult to find pH with what I've been given here. Now, there is a way to do it, but I haven't taught it to you yet. So, uh, so let's start by finding the pOH, okay? So the pOH is equal to the negative log of, and we already have the OH minus concentration given to us here, 6.3 times 10 to the negative 11. Okay, that's a fun one to put in your calculator. You've got to do your exponent thing and your log thing. <coughs> so just type in negative log and then 6.3 EE negative 11. Or if you have one of those calculators where you have to do this part first, you'll type in the 6.3 EE negative 11 and then you'll hit the log button. And then you'd make it a negative. Okay? 10.2, is that what you guys are getting? Okay, now technically it would be, remember the, the numbers before the decimal don't technically count as sig figs. Again, I'm going to be lenient here, but 10.20 would be our pOH. Whoops, there's no units there. You don't need units on your pOH, okay? So it's just 10.20. I would accept 10.2, that's fine. Um. Well, yeah, I guess I would accept that, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I probably would accept that because you're thinking about it in terms of the, the sig figs that are there. Um, so then what would our pH be? Yep, 14 minus 10.20. The pH plus the pOH always equals 14, all right? So whatever you get here, you just subtract it from 14, and that's going to give you the pH. So 3.80. The 14 is an exact number, so that doesn't count as far as sig figs, all right? Remember, exact numbers have an infinite number of sig figs, okay? So we're just basing it off of this one right here, so 3.80. And again... Sig figs on this unit are a little tricky, so we're not going to worry as much about those. But that's how you would do that. Does that make sense? Not all that difficult, is it? All right. Let's see if... I don't remember how many more examples we have here. Two more? Okay. Find the H plus concentration if the pH is 8.5. Okay. Now, <laughs> now we may be wading into some math that's a little bit higher than any of you have done up to this point. Okay, but I'll show you how to do this. It's not all that difficult. Um, what's different about this problem? They're giving us the pH, and now they want the concentration. So remember, our, our equation here is pH equals the negative log of the H plus concentration. Whoops. said H wrote X. I'm not sure why. But this time what we have is the 8.5 part, right? 8.5 is equal to negative log of H plus concentration. Well, easier said than done, right? Um, yeah, that's not exactly how you can do it with logarithms, okay? These are a little tricky. Some of you, maybe a few of you have had this already in math class. Now let's say, let's just rewrite this a little bit because this might help you. This is basically what we're trying to find, right? So in algebra terms, this is our x. Have you solved problems like that in your algebra class? <clears throat> uh, not exactly. That won't work for logarithms. For logarithms, you've got to do something a little bit weird. You have to do, I, just, I call it tenning it, ten it. Okay, I'm not, there's probably a more official term for it than that in math. Um, but what you do is you raise both sides to the power of 10, okay? Which, again, a little weird, all right? 
But what you'll do is 10 to the 8.5 power. Well, okay, tell you what, let's do this first. Let's get rid of the negative on both sides, okay? Because this, this negative, I don't like this negative being on the same side as the x, okay? So if I divide or multiply both sides by negative 1, that should take care of it, right? Okay, so now I've got negative 8.5 is equal to log of x. Everybody still with me here? Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to 10 both sides of this thing. I'm going to write it over here so you can see it. So now I've got 10 to the negative 8.5 power is equal to 10 to the log of x. Okay? Now, I'm not a good enough mathematician to explain to you exactly why this works, but when you take the log of x, uh, or you take 10 to the log of x power, it just cancels out the logarithm. Okay? Right, the log is base is 10, so for some reason that, that will cancel out the logarithm. Okay, so then what I end up with here is 10 to the negative 8.5 is equal to x. This part just goes away. It's math magic. <laughs> okay? Ask your algebra 2 teacher. Yeah. Ask your algebra teacher if, uh, if you want to know how that works. Log, it's, a, it's an exponential function, so it basically, it will smooth out. If you've got, if you've got a graph that's like this. No, it's not a number. No, logarithm is not a number. It's actually just a function that you can plug something into. And it will, it will basically take a curve that's like this. And if you graph it in terms of the log of x instead of just x, it will smooth out the curve and make it a straight line. Okay? <coughs> All right. So, point is, that you just need to know that process. Okay, that's what you have to do. So you'll basically end up taking 10, this, okay, this is the one time in this class, you need to hear me, the only time in this class that you have my permission to use the caret button on your calculator, all right? In fact, you have to use it here, okay? You should have a caret button, all right? So then what you're going to do on this one is you're going to put 10 and then that caret and then negative 8.5, okay? Um, and hopefully, hopefully your calculator is doing this in scientific notation. It may not be. Mine is. Um, you're going to have eight zeros before the three. Yeah. So this number should be 3.16. Okay. Um, at technically here, we only have one sig fig for our pH, right? So remember, that first number doesn't count. So I guess we're doing this right. It's three. <laughs> 3 times 10 to the negative 9. How did I get that number? Yeah, if you want to write, I mean, what it would be in decimals is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, there's a way on your calculator to change it to scientific notation. Maybe I can show that to you. Um, I like it better like this. And the only reason the only reason I'll say that I like it better like this is because you can kind of look at this and you can tell whether it's acidic or basic, right? Because remember, if it's if it's one times ten to the negative seventh, that's a pH of seven, right? So if it's one times ten to the negative ninth, that would be a pH of about nine. So that gives me an idea of where my pH is. That's the only reason that I kind of like doing it in scientific notation better, because you can see it a little easier. Yeah, and I will show you once we start to practice problems. Okay. Um, that's a little strange. Okay, I, I get that, but that's the process you use every time when you're going when you're given the pH or the pOH and you're trying to work backwards to the the concentration. Okay. You basically what you're going to end up doing ultimately whatever this pH is. You're going to take 10 to the negative whatever that is. That's, that's what's going to happen every time, okay? So if your pH is 6, you would take 10 to the negative 6. If your pH is 5.2, 10 to the negative 5.2. Does that make sense? Uh, well, I'm not going to give you any with negative pHs. That's, that's fairly rare. So, but it would still work if the pH is negative. Yep. Okay. So, third example here, find the OH minus concentration if the pOH is 2.5. OK. 
Okay, so where do we start? Yeah, I mean, essentially what we're going to end up doing is 10 to the negative 2.5, right? But again, just so you can see this one more time, POH equals the negative log of the OH minus concentration. We don't know this. This is our X this time, so I'm just going to call this X, right? So 2.5 is equal to the negative log of X. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1, so we end up with negative 2.5 is equal to the log of X. And then in order to get rid of the logarithm, I take 10 to the power of both sides. I'm talking right at the same time today, apparently. Negative 2.5 is equal to 10 to the log base x, or log base 10 of x. Okay, so then this cancels out. 10 to the negative 2.5 is equal to x. You just take 10 caret negative 2.5 on your calculator. That will give you your x value, which is the same as the OH minus concentration. Okay. So do you just put is that what you're getting? Yeah, this one again only one sig fig. So now if you put 0 0.0032, that's fine. Okay, but 0 0.003 is technically the right the right one. Or, and and that's. That's the way it's giving it to me on my calculator as well. But again, you can put this into scientific notation. It would be 3 times 10 to the negative third. And again, the only thing that shows me is, hey, this thing is acidic. But I already knew that. Why did I, oh, wait a second. <laughs> I, I need to be careful. It's basic, right? Okay, that's the OH minus concentration, not the H plus concentration. Okay. So, and that's, that's tricky. I might ask you that question as well, and I just fooled myself here. If I ask you, is this solution basic or acidic, you might look at 2.5 and you might think, oh, that's acidic because it's under 7, right? But that's not the pH, that's the pOH. So what's the pH on this one? Mike, Mike, any ideas on what the pH is on this one? Or how I would find the pH on this one? Yeah. You just said a chemistry word that you knew and you were hoping that that was right and it's not. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> in order to find the pH here from the pOH, I just take 14 minus the pOH, right? So 14 minus 2.5. Okay, so that's going to give me uh, 11.5 for the pH. Okay. So if my pH is 11.5, then this is basic, right? Anything above 7 is a base. Anything below 7 is an acid. I see how that works. Okay. Are there any more examples? Oh, there is. Wow, lots of examples. You don't have that one. Okay. I think, um, oh, I think because it says skip this. <laughs> I think that's why. And I think we're good enough with the ones that, that you have uh, been given. And there is a fifth example, but... We're also skipping that one. Yeah, so let's just do some practice problems, okay? All right, we've got a quiz tomorrow, so you want to take use of the time that you have left to make sure that you're working on those practice problems. The answer keys will be on the back of the sets of practice problems that I give you, so you can check your answer as you go. Yeah, I wish I had thought of that sooner, but um, all right, video over. Oh, oh.